I was supposed to count to five, so hopefully I counted well enough. And welcome, everybody, to another webinar from Live Chat. My name is Marcus, and I'm going to be your host today. I'm not going to be alone this time. Um, I have a special guest from the City of Lights, Mr. Arno Pavlia. Hello, Marcus. Pavlia. Pleased to meet you. Yes, yes. Don't like, worry. Almost, it's a French I name. Got it. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Thank you for inviting me today and tonight for some of them or to this afternoon. So I'm very pleased to, to talk about our experience in uh, in live chats. And thank you for joining us, because uh, we we have a lot of um, we will have a lot of questions and we will go through a lot of content that we things that we learned together as live chat working with Snapcall as one of the integrations, which it made a huge difference for a lot of business around the world, especially nowadays. So I think without um, any further ado, we should just kick it away. Let's go. All right. Let me just move this to the side. Okay. So our our webinar. Oh, let me wait because uh, I have the sound from from YouTube coming in. All right. We're back. So our webinar tonight or today, depending on where you're watching it from, is how to make the most of customer support and increase revenue in 2021. We really found all the buzzwords that we could find and try to put them in the title and especially 2021. So we make it relevant for at least 12 months for you to enjoy this uh, webinar. I'm just gonna move it to the next slide. One of the main things we're gonna be looking at tonight or today is uh, what is customer service? And this is probably a very, very cliche uh, thing to ask, but uh, it's not it's not something that people define very easily. How do you guys will define uh, customer service or not? I think it's something, let's say, the most important for companies because, and especially now with uh, some change, you know, today on the pandemic situation, you know, companies has to be closer to their customers and they have to answer as they, the best way they can answer to, to them. So, you know, customer service is a very good link between uh, companies and customer. And of course, customers are asking more and more things. And due to this digital transformation, uh, companies has to adapt and find the right channel to communicate with those customers. So, you know, Customer service is key. It's key for you. It's key for us as well. I see that you have a customer service 24 on 7, you know. So Yes, you, 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 do we do, man. We have people in the office. Well, I mean, not in the office in, in anymore, but we have people available all the time. And talking that, I'm talking about what you were saying about customer service. A lot of people think customer service is just the phone. It's just the person on the other side waiting for a complaint. Or it's the tech support who needs to teach you how to set up your VCR. If you don't know what VCR is, that means you're young enough to... Uh, <laughs> to be here. Anyways, let's move it to um, one of our colleagues, uh, Marta Kuzma, found this very, very good definition of customer service, which is customer service is a connection that you form with a consumer by what you say, do, branding, marketing, sales, and support. So it's everything. It starts when the consumer knows about your brand and it finishes when they forget about it. And hopefully that's not going to happen. But customer service is everything that happened through the journey of your customer. And the main goals of customer service is to offer something that they, your customer want or need or appreciate, to set and consistently meet their expectations and always add a little extra, add these little extra touches to make their experience special. Um, we want to talk about a little bit why is it important. Uh, customer service, again, if you, if you are getting the idea of what is the concept be behind customer service, uh, we want to show you what's in here. Uh, this is a graphic with, you can see it here, with the performance of uh, different companies throughout 2010 and 2019. The blue line here is uh, the average of standard and poor performance, standard poor 500. And the yellow one is a selection of companies, also an average, that invested heavily in their customer service. So this is like the, the, the ones that we found that are the top 10 customer service focused companies. And as you can see, the difference between the performance of the average versus companies that invested a lot of customer service is huge. And that's something that definitely make the difference on their earnings. So it's not just about delivering a great experience, it's about making tons of money. But Marcos, does it mean that uh, it works for other companies that are not on stock market? So because we are not yet there, so I think it works in any case, the definition of how we can perform better, I suppose. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's literally, it's just, it's a good example of what can happen when you turn 
into customer service, when you, your main focus and you become a customer centric company, when the customer is everything and you provide that excellent service. So why is it important? It's a broader idea. It includes branding, marketing, sales, and support. It includes everything that you do into delivering a service, into delivering an experience. Customer service is a promise to your customers, creates brand loyalty, it's a great source of consumer insight because you're creating this relationship. They they started talking to you. You're not here and they're there. You guys are together. That's super cliche, but yes. And of course, you save on PR because your uh, own customers are the ones spreading the word about your company because they believe, they love it, and they're part of they're part of the whole little ecosystem that you create with them. Um, these are. Very interesting numbers that we got. I think this this one's came from HubSpot. 90% of consumers are likely to purchase more when they have great customer service. That means if they buy one from you, you deliver great service, they will buy again. That's 93% of the consumers will be, will be coming back just because you deliver an excellent customer service. And I keep steering the idea of that you have to remember that customer service is key, not only to deliver a great experience, but also to make money. And and this one I'm going to ask you or not because um, I know um, French customers are uh, tough. And, yes, uh, we talked about this uh, before, but uh, the, what, what we found that 51% of customers will never do business with a company with bad customer service. At least in my experience, I am from Chile, so I, I have this Latin blood that I should be getting mad at things, but I don't get mad. I don't even tell companies when they do something wrong. On my case, I'll just don't buy from them anymore. I'll just yeah. walk away. I think it doesn't really depend on, on countries. It's more on a mentality. I'm mainly like you, you know, if I don't have a good answer from the company, most probably I will just turn back to another one and find a, a new offer. So I think, yes, you're right. French market has this tough, uh, but all market are, are tough, you know, if you, you, you don't really provide a good answer. And of course, we can really see difference in terms of, uh, of country about, you know, the channels they will be choosing. You know, some are chat, some are messaging, some are voice. Those we can see some differences between countries, but mainly, you know, again, uh, these numbers are very frightening for a customer, for a company that really doesn't really take care about customer service as a very important matter. And the main goal of uh, today's webinar is just to, not only to for you to understand how important customer service is, but how it makes a difference. So we have a bunch of different uh, examples here of uh, what's happening with customer service. Now, um, if you haven't heard, a pandemic hit the whole planet and apparently people's been locked down. And uh, did that make a difference? Yes big, huge difference on the way we act as customers. Um, just in the plane of the support and the plane in the plane of customer service, um, usually people, the, the, we had an average of 10% of difficult requests, right? The people will evaluate the requests as a, as a difficult one. Um, it grew of, to over 20%, which is a huge growth if you think about how how bad a request can get or how difficult a relationship with a customer can get. Um, the whole times, which is basically when we let when we tell you, we'll try to fix this, just give us a second, increase in calls by as much as 34%. And that's not only because of, there's nothing to do with the tech here now. It's just the people. People change. People wanted immediate actions. Uh, we didn't have enough people to answer some of these calls because people were staying at home or that we just didn't have enough information on what was happening. Every, and that's why the escalations here, they skyrocketed, skyrocketed to 68%, more than 68%. Don't forget that right now, even right now, I mean, right now is a, is a bit better, but there was a lot of stress on this whole process. So people didn't take no for an answer and customer support didn't have enough tools to handle stressed, locked down people. So the pandemic didn't really help us in any way. Um, but e-commerce are now, which is something that you guys are very related to. You, um, you're working with a lot of companies in e-commerce, um, providing uh, calls for the support, which we're going to get into it. Arno is going to talk more about that. But e-commerce, they were expected to uh, increase like year to year, like they always do. But um, they grew 32.4%, which is Huge. I mean, if you if you know a little bit about business, a 32.4% growth is 
very nice, especially when you're talking about e-commerce that brings billions of dollars to uh, around, move billions of dollars around the world. And and the other side, brick and mortar, fall 3.2 percent. People just is not people are not buying from stores anymore. The online orders increased 56 percent just in the U.S. And if I have to tell you my own story, like I don't buy stuff in the stores anymore. I just order everything. I I. I mean, I'm a bit antisocial too, but um, but uh, now I have more reasons to just whatever. I, I will order everything. Uh, Best Buy. If you are as old as I am, you know Best Buy. It's been around forever. It, it was about to go basically bankrupt, but it saw a massive growth of 105.5%. Target, huge one, 103.5%. And Kroger, 79.2%. These are stores that they've been around forever. They didn't have their e-commerce well planned, but they managed to grow because people changed their habits. Even Amazon, the poor Amazon who doesn't make enough money, saw a 39.1% year over year in 2020. Yeah, you want to say something, Arno? Yeah, I mean, those, those, those figures are, are, are amazing, in fact, because we, we really see a big shift during this pandemic. Of course, as you say, shopping now, you have to do it in France before 6 p.m. So, you know, you have, you have to run if you want to do that. But but really, the shift on digital has been increased, uh, you know, very, very strongly during this period. So, you know, it was... A, Big change for some companies, and they were not all ready for it. But you know, many of them, you know, did this this change. They find the tools, they find the teams, they had to change our organization. And you know, when I saw this number, and some e-commerce platform really managed to 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 leverage uh, customers through that different uh, through this period, it was it's fantastic in a way. Okay, it's hard for brick and mortar, uh, you know, uh, sector. But again, you know. Uh, it's a big change, and uh, exactly. it's a big change for digital. So it's it's quite nice for us. And and most of us are in the digital world, so we know that this is a, is a change that we were expecting, not as big as it was. I mean, I I'm still surprised. And the key of all this is uh, adaptation, right? Uh, we we managed to create support before. Arnaud came up with an amazing idea to create Snapcall, and we had to. We all had to adapt to a new, a new way of doing things, and I'm not going to say new normal. I'm not going to say it, but things are happening in a different way. So companies that manage to adapt to what's happening right now, they are making money. A lot of companies they couldn't, they are bankrupt right now. A lot of they're a lot of them they're losing money. Uh, even if you look at uh, examples like restaurants. A lot of the restaurants that they were only focusing on, don't worry, we'll sit two or three people here and we'll keep going. They're losing their money. They're losing their business. However, companies who managed to turn into a digital way of selling and deliveries and online shopping, they're thriving. They're getting a lot better. Don't forget, I want to throw a number here that um, my friend Shimon Biawas uh, wrote. 48% of the customers want to report their issues to the company by a phone. And this is my intro to what Arnaud's going to tell us. People want to talk to people. I know we can provide a lot of text, uh, chatbots, many things for people to solve their problems. But there's a certain level and a certain point that people want to talk to people. And still, let me see if I still have it. Still, this works. People still work into using a phone and calling people. With that being said, I know I'm going to pass the microphone to you so you can tell us more about Snapcall and how are you guys making the difference on customer support and customer service. Thank you, Marcos. So yeah, just to come back a bit on, on the story between live chat and Snapcall, it's a nice story because it started, you know, uh, during summer a bit before last year, and uh, uh, we started to be in contact with live chat, and we say, guys, we, we have a project. You know, we, we we like very much voice, but digital voice and uh, and you know digital channel, and uh, and. Already, you know, three, four years ago, we saw some big shift about how people were consuming and uh, how they were going online. And uh, and of course, for us, it's uh, we are used about uh, voice interaction with a phone number, uh, but we saw that uh, it was not really linked with a digital experience. You know, people come to a website and and finally they have to take their phone number and 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 and, and dial a number and go to us, you know, type one, two, three, whatever. So we wanted to do something more embedded. And when I say more embedded, it's because, you know, when you look for something, when you go now on, online, you want to get everything from these platforms. And uh, the calculation we did is that 60% uh, of uh, interaction in customer support are voice. 
And of course, it's cool, 60%, so it's high. But we see that now it's going to change. The percentage is going to change, it's going to be decreased, but it's going to be more qualified because voice is about qualification. You you don't want to give voice channel to everybody. So exactly. that's, 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 that's one thing. And what we have been seeing uh, with customer and companies they really want to, 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 to see like an escalation pass. So now when you go to a company, you want to chat or chatbot, you start with a chatbot conversation, you go to a chat for a first escalation, you know, you will talk, uh, you will chat with somebody or you can come from messaging uh, channel. And again, everything will go to, to live chat. So we, we, we went to, to you and say, okay, but let's go to a next step and let's go to a, a voice call and, and some other, you know, channel like a video later on. So it means that, uh, again, it's it's a pass. Me, for example, I prefer to start with a chatbot because I qualify my needs. I will go to a chat. I will talk to, to somebody, and after you know, let's say let's go for a call. So this was the experience we wanted to really to uh, to highlight and to put in in place in, in live chat, and we we managed to do it very fast because your platform is was really ready for us. So we were yeah very happy to do that. So and very quickly. When we put uh, our uh, uh, snap call, you know, on, onto the marketplace uh, of live chat, you know, we 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 started to grow very very fast, and we get a lot of customer feedback. So it's for that we are doing a lot of things now, you know, uh, according to live chat request and customer request. But this is a big change. Voice is going to be embedded on chat and uh, let's say a channel. But that, that's key what you're saying because um, n not everybody needs to talk to someone. I mean, not every company needs to have or not every company needs to use a voice call as the main uh, channel of communication. That's that, I think you put it very well when you say you start with a chatbot. If it, if you really need a person, you'll get a person, but the things escalate to a, a way that you need to have a call, you can have a call. Exactly. And and sometimes it could be even stronger. It's the, the, the team, the agent will decide to say, let's make a call because Again, sometimes you want to manage yourself, uh, let's say, to to really, uh, if you don't have any uh, enough availability, so you know it's better to, uh, to 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 choose as an agent to to choose each channel. So, but okay, so let's go to the presentation, of course. Okay, so to go on and and let's give more flavor of what's happening on live chat. You know, yes, regarding the voice this experience. Look, this one looks really nice. I'll let you go uh, take us through it. Okay. In fact, this is a story, just a, a screen capture of the experience. So there is two sides, agent experience on, on the left one and customer uh, experience on the right one. So uh, on here on this uh, example, uh, Jane is a support hero agent. So she will be, uh, you know, providing me some answers. So it's pretty simple. So uh, on the right side, you see uh, the, the live chat and I started an interaction with Jane. And after, uh, let's say, a discussion, um, Jane can decide to uh, to propose a voice call. And and what is important here? It's to stay embedded on live chat experience. Uh, I'm not going to do something else or provide a phone number, change channel, you know, disrupt you know the, the communication. So I want to have this uh, voice experience inside the live chat. And this is very nice. So as you can see, uh, we, we Jane is sending a call invitation. I just click answer the call and straight away, you know, this small uh, view uh, uh, happen and the call is straight away from my web browser or it could be from a mobile application as well. So this no, is- look, I, That's why I, I, I told you before, because I, I, I saw this before and it looks so clean and so, like easy to do it. It's not like, all right, let me try to open my other software to try to call you. It just, it just happens. Yes, exactly. It, yeah, because customer and customer need, you know, simple things. They, 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 they are there. They don't want to, to have an explanation. They just have to click. It's what they are aiming, you know, just to get the answer by clicking on a button. And in the same experience on, on the agent side, uh, oh, just can, can you just come back on the, on the slide? Yeah. yeah. And on the agent side, it's it's the same story. You know, we keep on the agent console that you are familiar with because this is a live chat uh, agent console. And during this uh, this thread, you know, you just have to click on a button, and straight away the call invitation is sent, and the call reception is inside uh, the agent console. So, again, what we wanted to create it's a effortless integration as well. So, because when we talk about voice integration, always people think about complexity. But at the end of the day, we just wanted to make it simple. And it's what we did with Live Chat team. When you go to Marketplace, you click Install, and it's done. 
it's done. You, it's available for all your agents, nothing to, uh, to configure. Everything is set up uh, straight away. And as you can see, the benefit for, for and we'll go uh, through that, but for customer, it's uh, digital, it's free, and for, uh, for agent, it's completely embedded. So this is a, a first look on how, it's, uh, how the experience looks like inside live chats. It looks awesome. And and just so you know, because uh, I'm not sure if you have access to that, but I'm just going to give a, a shout out to Monica and uh, from ECE. They're saying they love uh, Snapcall. And I'm going to guess it's Melissa from uh, from Valley Driving School, which is one of our favorite people in there that Snapcall has been a lifesaver. So you guys are saving lives. So you're really making business happy. So that's good. <laughs> Okay, so don't do too much. You know, I'm going to be red, but uh, yes, <laughs> uh, we, we can talk to, we can go to the next slide and, and, and talk about, you know, Melissa and, um, Yay. and uh, yeah, we have, we had to change. You have great customer and we have great customer now. So, you know, uh, Melissa was one of our first customers and, uh, and it was really great to, to work uh, with her at the beginning and we are, you know, uh, we are on Slack with her and we uh, are changing and asking, you know, what do you think about this feature or whatever? So, but let's come back to to the to the first uh you know uh, let's say the benefits that she 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 could highlight on our solution so the first thing is that as we say you know uh, it was a big shift during this uh, pandemic situation you know people were working at, at the office they had to work from home so they could not pick up their phone system and bring it back to home so you know uh with the snap call and live chat you just connect and you can pick up calls at any time uh of course uh, one thing that is important is during this Pandemic uh, period, you have you have seen on your side that you had more chats. Uh, it has been increasing a lot your your traffic, but voice as well because you had to connect people. People could not go to a shop and and talk straight away to somebody to a seller or somebody. So this voice conversation was e even more important uh, because you know customer were looking for for this connection. There is something that that's changed as well from from the diff, uh, the, the telephony system is that when an agent has a, a phone number, uh, it doesn't want to give it to a customer because the customer can call him back. So anytime, yeah. at any time. So you know, it's again as we show it, it's going to be pushed by the agent. So when the chat is, is ended, uh, you cannot call again. So they liked it a lot, and and of course. Uh, when telephony system crash, you know uh, it's going to be hard to to fix it and uh, and to to move it to another system. So with us, you can uh, have you know live chat and stamp code at any time, any anywhere you want. You just ne need uh, internet connection. So so yes, it, it was big help and uh, for us to have Melissa as as customers and to have also feedback. And I think we are giving back uh, you know some some good uh, let's say uh, let's uh, experience as well for for her and her team. And that's something I want to highlight about that is that, that uh, feedback from the, the actual support team. And if something that we learn in live chat is just keep your support people happy and they will keep your customers happy. So make sure you listen to your support yes. team on these ones. You want to go okay. to the next one? Yes, exactly. So uh, Jennifer, I I'm going to talk uh, as well for Biomat. Uh, Jennifer is a head of sales of Biomat. And, uh, and and again, same. We are going to to go more on on the sales, uh, let's say, uh, uh, need. But uh, let, let's focus here on the benefit of uh, how we can streamlining uh, customer support. As we said before, when you have a phone number, everybody can call you, you know, at any time and can call by the same agent, you know. But as it comes to a, a qualification process, you can reduce the number of call and do whatever you want. You can put it, uh, as you say, configure on some stats, on some pages, whatever. You have the power to do. Uh, the let's say the flow you want to have according to your agent availability and uh, and, and uh, again uh, according to your priority as well in business so again th the big thing that jennifer was telling us is was how you can uh, stay in the same conversation from a chat to a voice inside the same conversation you can go chat voice after voice you can go back to chat so you know it's it's, it's seamless and um uh, and again, you really need sometimes to help some specific customer, and uh, and in that case, you know, uh, you don't have to look some other way of connecting. So voice is ready. Just click on a button, and it, it's it's good. And uh, and if we just want to focus a bit on on the experiences for Jennifer, it was how to help customer on some complex situation because voice it's. It's mainly not for basic. Uh, it's how you can uh, explain on a different uh, uh, digital on a dif digital journey, a specific one. How you can help this kind of customer for a specific reason, and I think it helps 
to resolve this kind of, uh, of things. I really like okay. that, that kind of, I love when, when companies uh, do stuff with their customers directly, because you, you talk to all these people, it's not that you get... Yeah, uh, we, we talk not to all the customer because we have already 165, I think, uh, on live chats. So it's yeah. it's, big, it, it, it's a good start. It's a good start, but you know you have 31,000 customers, so you know we still have some 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 we'll work to do. We get in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, important to have feedback, and and you are very close to your customer as well. So you know it's good that we have our feedback, and you can get the feedback as well from from the same customers. Cool. And here's an here's a uh, an example from our friends at EZE, right? Yes, it's here, uh, Clare and, and and her and her team. You know, it's uh, it's really because they have they, uh, again these three customer has different needs and they they are covering some different support or sales activities, and. Um, and for for EC, it was, you know, one thing was important is how they could cover uh, all the countries that were calling them because sometimes when you you have a company and people call you from France, from US, from Italy, Spain, whatever, again you usually you have to provide phone number on those countries, uh, and finally with our solution you don't need to have this complexity of uh, telephony so everybody can call you, and what was important for them was to really to, to adapt according to their to their customer need uh, how they could uh, fit to the right channel chat voice and you know they were really sometimes at the beginning because due to covid they had to really switch only to chat the voice was not ever available but finally they, they put it on a process to say okay let's focus on this kind of segment let's focus on this customer and let's let's uh, bring the right experience to who is calling us so it, it's, it's it's very nice experience let me just keep moving because um, we have a little bit in depth right after this. But um, so why why is it, in your opinion? I mean, you you started this company for a reason. Why do you think engagement with voice is making a big difference? Engagement with voice is important when it needs to be, uh, you know, proposed to a customer. And what we show now uh, at the screen is um, a configuration, a special configuration you can do through the rich greetings of, of live chats. And, and again, when you come to a site and you're, you're there just to, to see what's happening and you know you, you try to find a product or a clue product, or you're stuck on the purchase uh, digital journey. And what is nice here is with live chat, we can do this kind of animation and say, guys, hey, we are here. You can chat, you can talk, you can do whatever you want. And this is something you can configure from your rich greetings. It's an engagement uh, process through live chat. And it's very nice, very sexy. So, you know, it shows to your customer, to your end customer that you are there. And on the specific request, on the specific digital journey, we are there and we can help you. You just have to click. Just tell us what you do. want to make a chat or request a call, but everything will be there and we can help you. And um, and again, you can create a fantastic experience with just three, four clicks in in live chat, and uh, it's it's there, and people are happy with it. It's, I I I really like how the rich greetings looks because it it gives it gives the customer this feeling of friendliness. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, all right, so I can talk if I want to. Maybe I don't want to. I'm just gonna chat. And so having that option there is is, is I think is very is very friendly. Is, it's very nice for the customer. You know what I mean? There's no pressure on top of it. It's not like this is the way we're going to do it. It's, it's, you have options. So it's, it's yeah. pretty cool. You have option, and what is good after you can really me measure uh, the number of uh, uh, chat uh, start conversation or request call uh, conversation. And after, you know, what we see most pro most in all cases are that uh, whatever people are asking for a chat, starting with a chat, he can go for a call and if he wants to call he goes back to a chat so after at the end whatever the starting point at the end he will benefit of post channel this is what we we are intending to to do with rich greetings but to pop them and this is the configuration of it it's very simple on live chat it's how you can pop them for the right customer you know for a returning customer for example or a specific journey and that's cool. That's cool thing. Cool, cool, cool. configuration. Um, we we already um, getting some questions on on the chat, but um, just just you know, shout out to Oscar. Oscar, I will ask that question a little bit a little bit later, but don't don't go away. I will. And um, some of our friends that they just left, Peter and Zayn, it was great to see them, but they're gone. Um, and yeah, we we gonna get to the questions 
we're almost towards that point. And best practices. This is my favorite part because I wanted to talk about what um, what the experience with Melissa uh, brought. Right. So having this 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 whole um, system in place, you you can chat, you can call, you can you can connect in a better way. First of all, they decrease the H AHT, which is average hold time, and they boost the NPS, which is Net Promoter Score. That means that they provided a better service, but not only that, their customer decided to promote, to uh, to agree and enjoy and be satisfied with the service that they're providing, right? Yeah. In fact, yes, KPI are very important and metrics are always important when you supervise a team. And, um, and again, you have to focus on some of them. Uh, I think uh, average handling time and NPS are very familiar for, for, for most of the people that, that are uh, looking at the video today. And, and it's very funny how you can really uh improve uh, decrease aht you know having some some chat on on phone call because sometimes some chat are uh, are killing your aht and how you you can solve it you know for phone calls or how you you have a customer starting a chat and call you after and has to explain because he's talking to a different agent so you know those kpi really makes sense and uh, and again what is important for 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 team and supervisor is how they can bring Better NPS, how they can measure, be measured on that, and have all the channel on their power to avoid any frustration for the customer. So exactly. that, that's what we are expecting to do. And um, I, I want you to talk about because you you uh, you guys talked to Jennifer directly, and, and I, I remember she brought you a lot of feedback. So um, what did they learn, or what are the main things that they got out of um, out of this experience? Uh, in fact, what they 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 really learn it's. Uh, in fact, it's how um, they can really manage uh, the customer relation as they wish. Uh, again, um, if they need to close a deal, uh, they will they will take time to this customer and 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 push to a, to a call. It's really to see how they can use it for support and and sales, and at each time to see how they can measure some 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 good result doing that. And and, and again. Uh, the story is just begin, uh, and we will have more feedback, and we'll see more metrics and everything. But again, it's how you can be uh, from a live chat providing an omnichannel experience. Whatever com people is coming, you can provide a set of channels, uh, you know, from messaging, chat, chatbot, and voice. So it's what you know customer expects. Only one entry door to the customer service, and it's what we, exactly. we are so pushing. And after all, it's the overall experience. It's, it's, you just want to deliver something. That is is solid. It's something that people will come back for it, right? And and that's what we're saying in the beginning. Don't forget the customer service is basically everything. So it's not just it's not just this bit, right? It, it, it completes this bit makes it better. This bit is, is the actual conversation with the customer it makes it so solidifies the relationship. But don't forget the customer service after all is the whole experience. And uh, on that, we wanted to bring some of the stuff that we learned in live chat. Um, four points that they're very important not only to i mean to the whole company but we got this directly from our support team what are the main things that they value and what are the best practices to deliver a great customer service and the first one is engage um it's not about answering questions it's engaging into a conversation creating a relationship with with your customer you we we don't really really wait for customers to give us just the information and we'll We'll come back to them, right? We we ask questions. We want to dig in. We want to find out more or what's the problem so we can solve it somehow. Would you agree or not? Of course. Uh, I mean, uh, it seems to be uh, simple, but yes, it's it's really the way that uh, customer service should work. So yes, of course, I agree. The other thing we uh, we wanted to make sure you get from our best practices to respond, and obviously that doesn't mean that uh, don't. Don't say anything to your customer. I mean, respond in a way that deliver that service, deliver that answer, deliver that thing that they're looking for. If if there's a tech problem, do that. If uh, just give the, the the missing piece that the customer is looking for, so you can complete this experience. Um, we have tons of data that we collect in in our in our tool in Live Chat, and it's a lot of data that's available for your team as well. So you. Based on that, you can respond better. You can foresee things. You can get ready for 
common questions that they come back or common issues that your product might have. Uh, having this all this whole information ready for you allows you to respond better and to solve those problems. When we talk about nurture, um, this is when the a little bit of the human touch uh, is coming. Doesn't matter if you, I mean, we are available 24 seven, but that doesn't matter if you're not creating something with that availability. If if you if you cannot have uh, customer support available that long, you provide something else. You have a chatbot available at, at off times that is going to inform the support that once they come back. You create proper tickets. You have a whole system that is there to you engage to respond and to nurture into a relationship. Don't forget that after all, this is a business. We are there to serve, but we're also there to make money. And the more we push to this into these best practices, the more the more we do for our customers and the better customer service we deliver, the more money we make. So is keep that in mind. And going back to the data point, uh, you need to understand what's happening with your customer and with your team. Is your team really delivering the questions that the customer is coming for? Uh, is Are we delivering that customer service? And the only way for us to find out is to go through different reports. Look at our AHT, look at our NPS, look at our different different numbers that we set for ourselves. Um, I don't, you probably um, are not, you probably have your own KPIs for the team, uh, yep. either in sales or in support. Yeah, for sales, yes. The main one is conversion, conversion uh, rate, of course. You know, it's a how you know how many, how you created a funnel and how you are going to convert it and how you make it you know sustainable and uh, more industrial. Uh, but for customer support, yes, we are starting to set up. Uh, you know, as we say, uh, HD NPS are, are the main one. And as you know, we are starting some new experience. We really want to be close to our customers. It's in our DNA. And you know, again, when you start services and you see that the online uh, market is changing, you, you really want to to to, to get the, the the thing from customer. What would be, make the difference? Uh, again, when the customer is struggling with uh, his tool uh, or, and he wants to to create a, a nice story, you have to to just listen and say, okay, there is something to do. And uh, you know, that that's beyond uh, you know the, the normal KPI. It's to be very close, very close to get a lot of feedback and see how we can manage exactly. to bring the same experience. And and the best part of having live chat together with Snapcall is that you can access all that information in real time. You have reports, like 20, 20 plus reports that you can access like that and measure what you're doing. If you don't measure, you're not doing things right. You don't know what's happening for real. Um, with that thought in mind, we're trying to give you a whole idea of how important customer service is and how to provide a step forward. You have live chat at Snapcall and you have a whole omni-channel service that they can cover different needs, different levels of escalations or needs for your customer. Don't forget, and we wanted to finish with uh, with a little bit of this uh, slide, industries are growing and the industry that they're using the product is growing faster than other industries right now, uh, pandemic and all. E-learning, 200 billion in global market size in 2019. is gonna reach over 370 billion in 2026. Retail is gonna grow for, uh, sorry, double in 2023 is 3.53 uh, trillion last year, 6.54 trillion. And I, I can't believe I say that word, trillion. Um, grocery, which is something we, we can see there's so normal before, just people with, uh, with um, in the grocery business just, just survives. 50% of survived US shoppers agree that they have started buying groceries online or made more purchases due to the pandemic. Uh, I'm sure we all remember the toilet paper fiasco when we all went crazy and just bought toilet paper for some reason <laughs> and the food delivery which I'm, I have a friend that started doing this right in, right before the pandemic and now he is let's just say okay um, projected to reach 200 billion in revenue in 2025 and rental believe it or not ride sharing is another industry that's forecasted to grow high over 50% and reach 117 billion by 2021 these numbers are not um, small numbers. Uh, that means there is money for almost everybody around just to go and get it. And what's going to make the difference for your business to stand out and be different and be better is provide a better customer service. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A right now. I just wanted to finish with a, a little quote. 
we're gonna have a q a and then i'm gonna ask arnaud what's coming with snapcall because i know he has some uh some cool ideas and some cool things that are coming soon yeah um this this phrase i'm not sure who put this phrase because i didn't write it uh, i think it was my friend shimon here um make a difference by deliver an extraordinary customer experience sounds like a super cliche obvious thing to say but it's not you're not doing this just because you're being nice or you're having a, a very gentle business you're doing this because you want to make money and the way you're going to make money is delivering a great customer experience so please if there's something that you're going to remember from this webinar is live chat snap call deliver an amazing customer experience and that's going to make you happy because you're going to make more money as a business now let's jump into some questions there's one from oscar um this this is directly for you or not so yeah. you hopefully you have these numbers well at least an idea what is the percentage of people that engage with voice proactively so there is uh, it, it's I have to be careful about the rough number to 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 give you. And uh, again, uh, it depends on industry. It depends on on digital journey. But uh, at the moment, you know, it could be you know ten percent. It's what we're what we are aiming at the end uh, is the sixty percent of voice interaction that you have today on the customer interaction will be shifting to 10% when it comes to digital. So this is a number we have in, in mind. So whatever has been pushed by the customer as a call request or pushed by the agent, we are aiming and we are thinking that this trans transformation will, will be running to a 10% voice interaction. And so it's more, it's more of, a, of a really dependent case to case, I guess, right? Like, um, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing not everybody will jump in and say, I need to talk to an agent now. Like, if I, need, I need a call. Yeah, it's going to be different processes than that we 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 have today with a phone number. You know, phone number. You pick up the phone, you you dial, and let's go. No, it's going to be more qualified. I say. So you know, again, companies wants to. It's not to reduce, but to really uh, be powerful about the number of calls they will have inside the company because it's a different organization to have you know real time communication. So. Again, what we see, and for example, if I come back to the first part of the sentence, Oscar, is uh, the people that proactively uh, ask for, for it. When we started to, to put a let's chat and let's talk you know, on some uh, rich greetings, we started to see really some, 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 some more engagement from customers because they say, okay, I can do it from, from here. So, and we started to see you know, like uh, growing up by five, 10% of interaction already. So, Many things will change about how you want to to propose call. So, and agents, agents, it's a good question as well. It's how you put a voice into a process, uh, because your agents are making chat. So sometimes they are not, uh, you know, uh, they don't have the, they are not managing voice channels. So it's a it's a long run. And again, when it, it comes to a process, it works very fine. So you know, uh, agent doesn't think that they, they are doing chat or voice. You know, they can do both. But again. Uh, it's what we did at the beginning. We started to work on re reward to see how we can increase the voice interaction. And it's what we see month after month. We see more and more interaction because, again, we are taking care of agents, how they can, let's say, propose this voice call. So, again, it's a start. But at the end, what we have in mind is that going to be 10% uh, will be uh, through this kind of uh, inbound or outbound call in digital way. It's, it's power to the agent. I, I, I think that's um, yeah. that's, a, that's a good thing. I, mean, I love the idea that the agent can control the situation better and without having the, the customer just to call over and over <laughs> to, for someone to answer uh, the questions. Evelina was asking, how do you plan to develop integration between live chat and snap call? It's already there, Evelina. Uh, the integration is available for you in live chat. So if you have a live chat um, account, if you have the software, you, you can sign up for snap call. Uh, in a seamless way, and you'll be ready to start using it. Um, I know Quay was asking about um, about different actions on live chat. That's that's not really the, the our, our business, Quay. I mean, you have your own support team, and you have to think of what customer you are catering for. So, if you're going to deal with American customers, it'll be probably better for you to handle a very good level of English. Uh, same same with English, or any English speaking country, but. Uh, American customer usually is a little bit more demanding on the way they, they this, the customer support works. Um, and something Evelina also asked is, 
some new features or functions. So, because I, I I was looking forward to this, I'll come back to to the chat afterwards. But what's coming for Snapcall? What's what's new? What's new? Scooby? Yeah, we have already shared with some some of with live chat, of course, and some of our customer. We we got uh, many requests, and the first one was uh, was screen sharing. Is how you know you start a chat, a voice, and after you can screen share because you know. When you are on on a uh, online, you know why not to go to the to a more rich experience. So, screen sharing is ready at the moment. We are testing it. We are seeing how we can put it on the process with uh, with uh, our chat and with customers. And when we say screen sharing, of course, we are saying about video. So, video is a is is a big trend. Uh, four years ago, um, we are talking about video, uh, you know, like that, but. Uh, on the last last year, with the uh, pandemic situation, we, we we are you know we are on video now, so we see that uh, video is going to be very helpful to make a, a stronger relation between the customer and and the agent. So, what we see today and what's going to be ready very very soon because we are testing it now, is how a customer will probably uh, screen share uh, his computer so like that the agent can answer very fast. And again, we are we can talk about AHT again. It's going to decrease AHT because agent will see, you know, there is no more frustrating for an agent, you know, asking where you are, what is your issue, whatever. When you see the screen, it, it, it's, really, it's really nice to, to go forward very fast. You can advise as well, you know, for some products. So this is one news we see. And second one, we, we see the agent will be probably sharing their, 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 their video uh, because, you know, to create a, a stronger relation. So this is coming. It was planned from from the beginning, but but again, uh, what we want to we do is accelerate. We, yeah, exactly, accelerate. And again, we wanted people to uh, to start with a voice conversation and escalating to a video. So you know, we are having always the same strategy: chatbot, chat, call, and video. And like that, you know, we 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 give a big uh, ramp up, a very nice ramp up for for agent to to increase our relation with the customer. So yeah, it's what we are going to propose very soon. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, you're right. I mean, um, there's a, there are a lot of things from the pandemic that they're probably going to stay. Uh, there will be uh, an increase in digital interaction. So having video available, I mean, I can I can foresee that being used by medical uh, institutions. I mean, lawyers, a anything that you can instead of just going for an external app that is Zoom or whatever, you can have everything at once. It's, have the whole experience in one place. Yeah, we see it for online shopping as well, uh, because you know when you go to a shop, sometimes you, you want to have some information, basic one or whatever. But you know, again, seeing the products is going to be a, a, a big uh, advantage. So you know, uh, again, we are we are going to just stay at our place, uh, just make the technology available. But I'm sure that uh, your customer will find how where to place it, how to create new experience with your customer, and this is the most important. Arnaud, I just want to thank you. Um, th those are the questions that we have for now. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us in our different social media. If uh, you have any questions for Arnaud, same thing. Go and check what Snapcall is doing because it's amazing. Um, hopefully, you learned something today. And if you do, and if you did, uh, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time. My name is Marcus. That was Arnaud. And thank you, everybody. Arnaud, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Marcos. Thank you, LiveTat team, for making this uh, possible today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye, guys.